Now the difference between me and someone else teaching you, well, I've seen, because I've been around, um, I've seen other people and what the way they teach and everything, their techniques, and a lot of them, after they become big or somebody knows their name and everything and a company jumps on board and wants to market their products or whatever, the thing is, they might not have ever been a teacher or an instructor, okay? Well, being a teacher or an instructor, I was able to use my students and figure out, say, why this person may be picking it up, but these two people aren't. And I'd make it simpler, and I'd break it down. For instance, um, when I was showing how to do shattered glass, okay? People would make squares, they would make some circular or whatever. And i tell them, you know what? Make a bunch of elongated, like, Doritos, okay? You got that triangular shape. It might be funny, but you know what? Every single time now, they make these long, triangular, shattered glass pieces. Things like that. I've learned to develop a way of teaching so that in the course that I was teaching at the schools, I had six days to be able to teach them all these different techniques, about like 20, 25 techniques in six days, and I was able to do it. This got where I was able, actually had to figure out quicker and easier ways to get through them. Also, the reason the techniques are easier, okay, is because I'm not your typical artist that you would find uh, at a gallery enjoying like art saying, I love the way the color, and that's not me, okay? I'll be totally honest with people. I start off my demonstrations by being totally honest and telling them. I got in, into this about 18 years ago. Um, I was a gas station attendant, okay? I had the long hair on my back, played in rock bands and everything, and I was going nowhere really fast, okay? Um, I didn't make a whole lot of money. Matter of fact, I only made about 130 to 150 bucks a week. And I seen somebody airbrushing, and I seen the money that they were making, okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I got into this for money, okay? And the reason I'm telling you my story is because... Because I'm money motivated, when I go to do something, every time I go back to do that, say the, the fire or the stone or tears or whatever, I try to figure out while I'm doing that, or even before or after, a quicker way of doing that. So over 18 years, I was able to tweak my designs down. Plus, I worked at theme parks. I worked at malls. And you figure... A theme park, think of it like this. They tell me about three, four, to maybe even five million people come through a theme park um, in a season, which you're talking about four or five months. Okay? In that season, if four million people came through and just everybody just gave me a dollar, I'd be a multimillionaire, right? Well, that's not the way it works. But you got to figure the amount of people that we can generate to come to the airbrush shop there and buy something, well, if it's 20,000, and we only sell uh, maybe to 10,000, it's X amount of money. Well, if we can get 20,000 and we can sell to 20,000 or 15,000, we'll make more money. So we're always designing quicker techniques, things that look like they're worth a lot more, but behind the scenes, we're easier to make. And that is the whole key to how this got developed. The first year, at the theme park, we made approximately almost a hundred thousand, about ninety-eight thousand. The second year, in that four months, we made two hundred and fifty thousand. In the third year, we made over three hundred thousand. Because during the winter season, we would actually design more intricate-looking designs, but they were easier through stencils, through techniques in the design process. We made them easier, so they looked difficult and looked extremely you know, worth more and everything, but they were easier to do. I took those techniques when I decided that I didn't want to be doing t-shirts anymore, and I moved into the automotive industry and to doing wall murals and all that, and I took and I applied these techniques to my my system. So now I was able to take, and because you don't want to jeopardize the quality, so I was able to take my flame system, for instance. The flames look totally realistic. But the thing is, instead of seven or eight colors like other people's systems, and 11 steps, 12 steps, you're able to do it in three colors and three steps. You're able to do the, my flames. Now, what I did is I went to the company that makes the paint and everything, and I designed and I mixed up this color. So you just need a standard white, a standard transparent yellow, 
And then we went and we took the red oxide, we tinted it all up and made that flame color. So now with three colors and three steps, you're able to do some realistic looking flames. Um, because of that, I mean, now you could go, and I mean, that took me years to learn, years to tweak it down. I used to take five or six different colors. I used to go up to the mixing machine every time, trying to mix it up and figure out how I can make it quicker. Boom, now i got a three-step system. I can go up to a vehicle, something like that Corvette you see right on the front of the series. Um, and because it's only three steps and three colors, I can actually do that vehicle. What you're looking at, about a $5,000 paint job. I can do it in about two and a half, three hours. There's only three colors. I lay it all out in white. You'll see in the video. I go over it with the transparent red oxide. I designed this little flame technique with the stencil. You make that. You go over the thing with the, can the transparent yellow. It all mixes together and makes the realistic flames that you see. Um, now that right there, the flame system is one of the hardest techniques to teach. Hardest techniques to pick up. Stone, very easy. Here's a clip from the stone where you just take the black. You do this little stippling technique off the razor blade. You take the white on a gray background and boom you're done with stone glass you take the masking now the masking is a key to a lot of the techniques um, it makes it very easy you don't need to have any kind of gun control or anything you'd be able to do this type of stuff I'd like to go over the fact that a lot of people think that you need to be some kind of artist to be able to do this you don't have to be an artist matter of fact I hear it all the time I can't even draw a stick figure this and that you don't have to be able to draw a stick figure matter of fact to tell you the truth in 18 years that I've been doing this Nobody's ever asked me to do a stick figure, so if you can't draw a stick figure, you're fine. Okay? But anyways, I'll joke aside, we do this with projectors, where you'd be able to take a projector, take any picture that they give you, you put it on a projector, you just line it up, back it up, closer, whatever, get it the size you want, you focus it, and you trace it. I've never met anybody who can't trace. Okay, once you got it on there, in my first, tech, first DVD, we go over all the freehand techniques. With the freehand technique, I'm going to teach you how to control the gun. I've actually designed techniques that will be able to make it quicker and easier to learn. Okay, um, For instance, after you learn how to get a little bit of the control, the dagger stroke, the most important thing, we go over this pyramid thing. And with the pyramid, it actually tries to take from the thinking process down to making it second nature. And I need to make it second nature. It's almost like holding a pen or a pencil. When you go to write a story, it's all up in your mind. If you don't know how to hold a pen or pencil, you'd be holding it all different ways, trying to you know, write or whatever. You don't do that. You just pick up the pen or pencil and you just go ahead and write. Well, I have to make it second nature for you to pick up the airbrush and just pull back and know how close and far away to get. I actually developed techniques to be able to get that down quicker. Remember, I had six days in some of these schools to be able to teach these different techniques. And one of them, the first one, is freehand control. 